This video is one of those light bulb moments that kind of pinged about an hour ago when I was in the Discord server having a chat with someone about uh, subscriptions and, and perpetuals. And if, if you want to join the Discord server, by the way, join button is down there. Links in the description to get you in the Discord server where I chat to people about this kind of stuff. But long story short, I'm planning a video to talk about perpetuals versus subscriptions, the license model, get the facts out there, discuss the myths and my opinions and all that kind of stuff. But I was getting people's takes and feedback on it, and someone had a really interesting take on it, and that was, look, subscriptions, okay, but there's something about it, mate. You better bloody know what you're doing when you subscribe to an Autodesk product, because if you, for example, subscribe to a month of Inventor, you don't want to be spending the majority of that month learning it, remembering how to do stuff that you, that you forgot, that you used to know, or spending the majority of that month figuring out new stuff, getting up to speed if you've never used it before, for example, because you're spending the same amount of money to learn that software as somebody else's who's in full swing and is using it on a production job. And that learning process can take months and years in some people's cases. That's not a good use of money. So that kind of got me thinking and this thought is for Autodesk to take or leave. Look, if you if you want to run with it, mate, you, you by all means, I want full credit for it if you do. But look, I don't for a second think that you haven't already thought of this and it's possibly been dismissed for reasons that I, I don't know, maybe I haven't thought of yet. But if you're a viewer watching this and this sounds like something you'd be all over in a heartbeat, put the comments down below. Autodesk will watch this. They will read it. And your feedback could be absolutely invaluable in deciding if they want to move forward with this. So my idea is... Currently, there is an impossible paywall to accessing Autodesk software to learn it, to practice on it. Uh, no, no, the free trial is not really enough. That's not a solution to learning something. That's just that's an obligatory kind of period, really, to tick a box. So what about, what if, right? And, and I'll, I'll talk about where this can be beneficial and who this can help and all that stuff afterwards, right? Let's just get straight into it. Why don't Autodesk have a dedicated program where they have a bank of virtual workstations in the cloud where you can go to sign into an Autodesk account through your web browser on any device, any laptop, of any spec, it doesn't matter. You pick an application that you want to use and then in return for an hourly fee, which we'll talk about in a second, which will be minimal, Autodesk will deliver to your laptop a preset configured workstation straight to your browser with the application installed, configured, and ready to run that you can practice on, learn on, mess about with to your heart's content for as long as you want and you just pay them an hourly fee for the pleasure of doing so. So say for example, I don't know if you saw the video that I made a couple of months ago on Frame, but Frame would do exactly just that. This is based on Amazon Web Services so you sign into your frame account and behind that frame account could be an Amazon virtual, non-persistent, disposable virtual workstation with four virtual CPU cores, 16 gig of RAM, and maybe a graphics card, maybe not. It doesn't matter in most cases for the sake of just practicing and learning. But you sign into your frame account. This could be an Autodesk account. You pick the application that you want to, to learn on and to practice on, and then within a matter of seconds without you needing to install anything, without messing about with downloads and faffing on with all that aggro and hassle, you get the application delivered and you've got Inventor or you've got AutoCAD within the click of a finger for you to play around with. And it's all within your internet browser. And there's, I've used this, you can use this. Latency is pretty much minimal. It feels like as good as a local workstation definitely 100% good enough for learning on and practicing on. That could be Inventor. You've got full ray tracing capabilities in there. You can do pretty much, every, not even pretty much, you can do everything you can do on a local workstation in a virtual workstation. Or that could be AutoCAD, for example. There you go, AutoCAD 2020, I think it was at the time. It could be VRED, it could be Revit, it could be Max, it could be Maya, it could be whatever. But within seconds, you've got that workstation sent straight to your browser full Windows 10 or Windows Server or whatever it is, applications already there, you just open it up and start practicing. Autodesk, why not? Well, I guess one of the 
the oh the, the oh no you can't no we can't do that because people would abuse it people would abuse it people would use this cheaper access to design software to do production work on that's one of the the, the abuse cases for educational licenses where and, and, the, and educational licenses wouldn't solve this because I'm pitching this at people who've maybe lost their job uh, and they need to get access to design software to to maybe help themselves with gaining new employment for example they're not students they can't get educational licenses I'm pitching this at those kinds of people but for the people who would have tried to abuse this for production purposes what does you can you can do that you can do something about that very easily because you are delivering in this instance a curated workstation session that you have complete control over in an application that you own if you want to you can make that application and that workstation completely impotent absolutely cut off isolated and disconnected from the outside world you can make it so that that application can't export files export PDFs export any kind of document or data. It can't print. It can't translate data. Any kind of activity that anybody would need to do to take what they're doing and send it out to make money with, you can disconnect that and turn that off. Yes, you can. You can do that because you've got full control of that workstation. AutoCAD, for example, someone creates a drawing. That drawing in AutoCAD is absolutely worthless. It's completely worthless unless they can get it off AutoCAD and to somebody else. And they can't do that unless they can print it or they can export it to a PDF and then get that PDF off that workstation and onto somebody else's system. Even doing a print screen, you can disable print screens. You, you can do that. You can disable the ability to print screen if you need to. And even that's going to be, nah, come on, people aren't going to accept a print screen. It's not, it's not really going to work. Autodesk Inventor, 3D Studio Max, you can't satisfy the, the contractual obligations of a job using print screens from 3D Studio Max or Inventor. It's not a thing. So come on, this is an this is absolutely a solution. Right, let's talk pricing. So these are the current retail rates-ish, I suppose, for Amazon Web Services. You can sign up to a, a virtual Amazon tenant or a workspace or whatever they call it, where you can you can be delivered to you right now. Four cores and 16 gig of RAM and no graphics card for, I don't know, 64 cents an hour. Or oh, I guess you don't pay 64 cents an hour, obviously. Why don't you take the cost that, it, that you pay Amazon, your actual cost, add on 30%, for example. Mark it up 30% and charge that to the guys who want to learn, practice, experiment, and get involved with your software. This would be phenomenal for your brand reputation if you offered a program like this. Say, for example, if I've got a spare weekend night, a Saturday night, wife's away, I want to play around with 3D Studio Max. I maybe I've got a job coming up or a job interview coming up or I, I, want to, I just want to play around with 3D Studio Max because I've heard it's really cool. I might want to change career, whatever it is, but I can't get it 3D Studio Max. I'm not going to subscribe to a year of 3D Studio Max. I'm not even going to subscribe to a month of 3D Studio Max for a couple of hundred dollars. Turn it in. I'm not going to do that to play with it for a night. But what if I could pay 50 cents an hour, 60 cents an hour, or 50 pence in English money, or 50 oh, cents in euros, isn't it? Three hours, a dollar fifty. One pound fifty, one euros fifty for three hours of practicing with 3D Studio Max. What? What's that? It's chump change, Autodesk. It's chump change to the end user, and it costs you. In fact, you're making money because you're marking it up by thirty percent, and the overheads on this, on at your end, are surely minimal. Surely they're minimal. You're relying on Amazon Web Services to spin these servers up. You've got to. You've, sure, you've got to design the, the workstations, make sure they're impotent. There's a bit of work to do at the start, no doubt. But once you've done this. Very little upkeep on it, besides like maintaining the applications and all that kind of stuff. So ongoing support, answering user questions. You can offload that to the forums. You can put it in the terms and conditions that, you know, this, this is as is. If anyone's got any help, look, you're here to learn. You're obviously going to have questions. We can't fend that. We're not an we're not an on-demand training instructor. So if you've got any questions, go to the forums. 
go to your reseller, support the reseller channel. I, I don't know, I just feel that this is a win all round for everyone. It'll help mitigate piracy for that guy. And not all software pirates are sat in a basement with a hoodie on and a mask, you know, just looking to download Inventor just for, for giggles, you know what I mean? And a lot of pirates are people who just want to play, who just want to experiment, dabble, see what something's all about. You know, they just want to find whether it's something, the software application, something that is within their reach. Maybe they want to follow a few tutorials online, but they're not going to, someone's not going to subscribe for $200 a month to follow a tutorial when they might ultimately decide this isn't for them. It's too difficult. They didn't have the time in the end. Something happens midway through the month and they can't actually commit to the rest of that learning experience. But if they got 10 hours out of it, hey, you got a few dollars, they lost a few dollars. What's that? $10? Come on. It's not a lot of money. Magnify that Autodesk by thousands hundreds of thousands of people. The amount of new business you could potentially win from this would be insane. The me if you did this, the message would, you'd be the only people doing this. It would be a, it would be a massive brand success if you offered something like this. The, 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 your software would be so accessible. The amount of people who would be trying it and playing with it and experiencing it. Where's the downside here? I'm not seeing any downsides at all. As long as you can safely make that application completely impotent and remove any ability for that user or any user to abuse it for production purposes, which you can do, then it's a win all around. I can't see any downsides unless I'm so, it's one o'clock in the morning here. I'm, I don't know, maybe I've got fuzzy brain and I'm not seeing it, but it just seems like so obvious. Come on, it's, come on. So, Want to think about, perhaps, virtual workstation, sign in, pick the application that you want, pay 60 cents, 50 pence an hour, play with it, experiment with it, mitigates piracy, helps people in education, helps the unemployed, helps people who are starting work, get up to speed, I don't know, apprentices, bit of homework, that kind of thing. So many uses for this. I don't know, just a thought. If you've got a thought, put it in the comments down below. And hopefully Autodesk will see this and I don't know, I don't know, maybe, maybe it'll go somewhere, maybe it won't, but it's worth a thought. Thanks very much. I'll see you in the next one.